Oh, hello. In this section 13, we're going to talk about the concept of band diagrams that will govern the way we're going to look at devices throughout the rest of the course. And this concept of band diagrams will follow you in the analysis of, an analysis of any of the semiconductor devices you will be looking at at any time. So this is a, a short but very important uh, conceptual lecture. So it is, of course, motivated by our desire to understand electron flow in the system and to understand devices. And here is the layout of the course again. And so far, we've looked at the components in red, where we, we've dealt a lot with uh, materials, quantum mechanics, and in the last section, we talked about occupation of states. And um, we looked at complicated uh, band structures like germanium and silicon and gallium arsenide. Um, they look like horrendous spaghetti plots, uh, where these are things that are rather new to you. And we introduced distributions of carriers, so we occupied those states. And at some point in the last lecture, we collapsed all of these states into delta functions at the conduction band edge. But the origin of the conduction band edge, the existence of a, a band gap, all of that was underlying uh, the materials, the symmetries of the crystals, quantum mechanics of a periodic potential. And uh, we then uh, looked at number of states in the system, and we were able to come up with a rather simple concept of just a density of states that is comprehended in an electron density and a hole density right at the band edge. So we collapsed all of this information of effective masses and density of states and these occupation factors into these very simple looking delta functions. Now let's carry that a step forward. We want to look at real devices. So we're going to leave some of the material aspects, the crystals, etc., behind. And all we're going to do is begin to transfer that into the concept of what we need to do trans uh, transport in devices. So we'll transfer these delta functions into devices and look at how do these charge densities and delta functions behave throughout a device, a length of the device. So we're not quite yet ready to compute current in that but we're going to look at band edge diagrams of what is the landscape that electrons move through or holes through in a structure like this. All right, so just a quick reminder, this band, uh, a landscape of electrons is really deformed uh, or formed by a um, EK diagram that originally stems from a periodic potential of the crystals. And we had derived a parabolic-like uh, dispersion for electrons and for holes. And we're going to just look at um, these distributions very simply, almost forgetting about the complicated origin of this band structure. For the purpose of this lecture here, we're going to um, begin to um, forget about the holes, but we're going to start defining the kinetic energy of electrons in the system. So you would measure that for electrons from the conduction band edge and measure the kinetic energy in the system like that uh, from the bottom of the band, and you give it some potential energy that is measured from some sort of reference point. All right, so that means the overall uh, potential energy is uh, the conduction band edge minus some reference that could be sitting way below here, and we measure that reference uh, and apply that to, or relate that to an applied voltage where we shift the potential throughout the device. So that's the applied voltage in the system here. Same voltage here. All right, so now we're going to map this into a spatially varying structure. So imagine that you now have a, a crystal that is pictorially speaking long, and you have these dispersions, these EK diagrams along the device. And let's subdivide the device into components where we set the potential uh, at the left side here to zero, and on the right side we apply a potential V1. All right, so let's imagine that um, uh, throughout the structure you effectively shift uh, the potentials, these EK diagrams, according 
to a distribution of potentials. <clears throat> and at the end of the device, the overall potential is shifted by V1. All right. So out, throughout the whole device, uh, we're, we're shifting the potential with the applied voltage. Here's a, a similar picture, but what we're going to assume is that there are segments where the potential is dropped, like this, against the reference potential, and that there are segments inside of the device where the potential is constant. So the electrostatic potential uh, is going to be constant. So across this small region here, where there's a potential increase, the EK diagram drops, the electron potential energy drops, then the EK diagram stays constant, uh, spatially, so to speak, and then it drops again in energy and stays constant like this. All right, so what does that mean? In terms of electric field, it means that inside these regions where you have a, um, a potential uh, that is spatially varying, you have an electric field that is constant. In this case here, we have dropped uh, uh, the potential linearly. That means in that region, we must have a constant electric field. Okay, So that is then also related to a uh, change in the conduction band edge in this device. Now, if you look at Gauss's law, you know that um, the, the charge in the system is proportional to the change of the, uh, the differential of the electric field with space. That means in order to have a electric field that has a step-like feature like this, you must have delta function sheet-like charges at, at these interface points, okay? That would be the second differential of the electrostatic potential throughout the device. All right, so having these um, step-like electric fields or um, a, a discontinuous uh, slopes of the electrostatic potential mean that you have charges at uh, sitting at a particular location of a device, sheet charges in this one-dimensional case. And in fact, what we do often throughout this course is we have instances where charge imbalances occur inside a device, and we actually start from the physical reasoning of charge imbalances or sheet charges or distributed charges that are not balanced, and we integrate up from the charges to the electric field to the electrostatic potential such that we obtain the distribution of um, electrostatic potential throughout the device. So, let's, so we, the question now is can we replace this complicated EK looking a diagram with a more compact um, representation? And this will be the band diagram. This is what we use throughout the rest of the course, and this is what you will be using throughout the rest of your device engineering career, is plotting EK, uh, band edge diagrams. All right, so again, as a reminder, we had um, come from a carrier distribution that we have calculated from the density of states and a Fermi function and uh, a distribution of carriers, we have collapsed that into delta function. So we're forgetting about the distribution of carriers. We collapse them into single delta functions. So why does this work? Why can you do such a thing? So we calculated the intrinsic carrier concentration, Ni. That is typically around 10 to the 10 per cubic centimeter. And that compares to 10 to the 22 uh, uh, atoms per square centimeter. So that means um, if each atom has 10 to 20 electrons, you have 10 to the 13, um, and 1 in 10 to the 13 electrons is mobile. So there's very, very few electrons compared to all of the electrons that are mobile. And a typically doped semiconductor that we'll talk about in the next segment will have 10 to the 18 mobile electrons. That's still 1 in 10,000 electrons as being mobile. So, um, since we're not including the Coulomb interactions of these individuals, 
What this means is collapsing the distribution into delta functions at any point in space, it means that the system is considered in local equilibrium. As you march through the device, you assume that the detailed energy distribution doesn't matter. There's no such thing as, say, hot carriers um, that flow from one slab of the device to the next, but you have relaxation throughout the device. And that is why this collapse into delta functions makes sense. The flip side is, if you have hot carriers that are relevant to the overall device performance um, or distributions of carriers that, um, due to some sort of pass filter, band pass filters or band edges, etc., then this distribution as a delta function will not work. All right. So now, let's replace these dispersions that we have sketched here by these vectors, these delta functions throughout the whole device. And we're hiding all of the quantum mechanics in this device like this. And we end up with a device that looks like this, where we have just plotting the conduction band edge like this. And we might be just plotting the, the valence band edge like this. And the consequences of such um, uh, distribution where you have uh, linear potential increases in, in small segments of the device is again, you can follow that through with an electric field and sheet charges that must be in these kind of uh, points where you have changes not, um, in the derivative of the uh, electrostatic potential and constant electric fields. Therefore, you must have delta functions of charge. All right, and again, we will calculate sheet charges or charge distributions throughout devices and analyze those based on physical insights, physical calculations, uh, physical intuition or uh, processes in the device. And we will start from here, from spatial charges, and integrate those up to re 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 uh, end up at the electrostatic potential of a device. And then we can draw a Fermi, uh, a band edge diagram. So this process will follow you throughout the whole course. So here I'm pulling in some slides from later sections. Here's a PN junction where we will do this. And here's a bipolar junction transistor where we'll do the same. And we draw band edge diagrams through uh, these structures. And again, we're assuming that the structure is in local equilibrium. And you do this even without any current flow. So these diagrams really make sense to, to plot when there's no electron flow. And if there's electron flow, that, um, that the impact of the flow is negligible on the overall band structure or band edge diagram. So this will follow you through the whole course. So it's very important that you understand that we derive these band edge diagrams from uh, um, these physical insights. We have collapsed complicated band structure, complicated bulk materials, density of states and masses and into these delta functions. Uh, the occupation factors are still important. They are buried in the occupation of these delta functions of electrons. And this is what we'll use uh, throughout the course to draw band edge diagrams. So uh, you will find that throughout this course, you will you'll end up using this, this approach. And you can go back to this lecture if you need to just reconfirm um, any doubts you might have about this concept. So with that, this is the end of section uh, 13. So thank you.